If the 707 ushered in the jet age at Boeing, the 747 brought it to the masses. But the crowning of the Queen of the Skies wasn't a sure thing, and Boeing's road to the jumbo jet was anything but smooth. By the 1960s, Boeing already knew it needed a large replacement for the 707. Boeing began work on a program assigned the model number 747, part of the 7x7 naming sequence established with the 707. The team, led by Joe Sutter, explored ways to create an aircraft capable of more passengers and that would fly further than the 707. However, at the time, manufacturers generally believed that supersonic jets would replace existing passenger aircraft. So, Joe Sutter and designers needed to make the 747 an aircraft that would be relevant, even without passengers on board. They set out to build a versatile aircraft that could carry passengers and freight alike. While it was Joe Sutter and his team of Boeing engineers dubbed the Incredibles that brought the 747 to life, it was the relationship between Bill Allen, Boeing's CEO at the time, and Juan Tripp, the CEO and founder of Pan American World Airways, that fundamentally created the 747. Pan Am played a vital role in the 707's development and success, putting pen to paper in 1955 for the series. Being pioneers of the jet age came with risks on both both parties' shoulders. However, they relished the success. When Pan Am came knocking for a larger aircraft, Bill Allen confidently told Juan Tripp that if they ordered it, Boeing would build it. The larger aircraft being referenced was the eventual 747. Finding the right design for the 747 took trial and error. Boeing explored many ways to increase capacity, including stacking two 707 fuselages on top of each other. While a straightforward way to to quickly increase passenger capacity, there was concern about emergencies requiring slides being deployed from such a height. Joe Sutter and his team returned to the drawing board, and as described by Michael Lombardi, the senior corporate historian of Boeing, a moment of genius arose. Instead of making the 747 taller, why not make it wider? And the wide-body aircraft was born. The wider aircraft addressed customers' needs for additional capacity and mitigated potential safety concerns over a raised height. While the 747 enjoyed nearly 55 years of continuous production, the journey to RA-001, the designation for the first 747, was challenging. The team that designed and built the aircraft came to be known as the Incredibles. When the days would end, executives could not get the Incredibles away from RA-001. When they'd finally leave, they'd sneak around the back of the building and re-enter to continue work often sleeping around the plane and construction of the factory. The work ethic of the Incredibles is still revered within Boeing's engineer corps. Embarking on the journey to build the largest passenger aircraft in the world comes with a unique set of challenges, like where to build it. In the mid-1960s, Boeing didn't have a building that was large enough to house the 747 for production, so it built the largest building in the world in Everett, Washington. To this day, the Boeing building in Everett is the world's largest largest building by volume. The building now covers 39 hectares or 98 acres and encloses a staggering 13.3 million cubic meters or 472 million cubic feet. It wasn't just the space to build the 747 that presented Boeing with novel problems to solve. As the 747 was designed to also carry freight via a lifting nose, the cockpit had to be placed elsewhere. Sutter and his team placed it above the main deck. However, given the height of the aircraft, there was concern that pilots would have difficulty taxiing the plane. So, Boeing built a mock-up flight deck on top of a truck. Nicknamed Waddell's Wagon after Chief Boeing Test Pilot Jack Waddell, pilots could climb the truck and steer it from that cockpit around Everett. It was eventually determined that the 747's height would be no problem for pilots. As a touch of humor, around Halloween, the nose of the device would be painted as a pumpkin. Not everyone, though, believed that Boeing was headed in the right direction with the 747. The aircraft's unique design and its massive size increase over the 707 raised doubts about the 747's viability. Nancy French, Joe Sutter's wife, said that people would often come up to her in public and tell her that her husband was out of his mind and the aircraft would never fly. Joe Sutter was determined to show the world the promise of the 747. He placed his wife right at the point where the 747 would rotate during its first flight, telling her that this is where he would prove everyone wrong. 
and of course he was right. Its first flight was labelled as majestic, with many in awe over how the aircraft seemingly looked like it hung in the skies. This is when the aircraft was dubbed the Queen of the Skies a name that has stuck to this day. The 1969 Paris Air Show was the 747's debut to the wider world. Just a few months after the first flight, the aircraft was still beset by issues with its Pratt & Whitney engines. Nevertheless, the chief test pilot decided that they would give it a go, making the transatlantic flight from Seattle to Paris. As the 747 approached, the Paris airport was covered in fog. Attendees awaiting the aircraft's arrival couldn't see the 747 approaching but they could hear it. The roar of the four engines announced its presence well before the assembled crowds could see it. Bursting through the low clouds at the end of the runway, the 747's first international arrival could not have been more well choreographed for Boeing's PR department if they had tried. Crowds flocked during the air show to stand in awe underneath this giant aeroplane. Less than a year after the first flight, the 747 entered service in January 1970 with Pan Am from New York to London. It instantly became a flagship for Pan Am, an aircraft that airlines had to have. In some instances, carriers that ordered the aircraft did not actually have a logical plan for it, but wanted to fly the 747. Notably mentioned by Michael Lombardi, People Express Airlines flew a 747 from Boston to Denver. This an airline that rapidly expanded thanks to the capabilities of the Boeing 747. People Express Airlines had a very interesting way about operating services. Fares were paid in cash and actually aboard the aircraft with a predominantly economy class configuration. However, it was a business model that had no feasibility for the long term. Eventually, they had debt that they couldn't handle and are no longer present in the industry. The upper deck presented airlines with unique opportunities to improve their customer experience and turn it into something that would elevate flying, whether a bar, lounge, or something else. Airlines operating the 747 competed with each other to see who could offer the most opulent journey. Eventually, the economic reality of air transport would see revenue seating place on the upper deck and the communal spaces fall away. With over 50 plus years in production, Boeing had a significant period to experiment with additional variants. Some worked and some failed, but it presented the company with great opportunities to innovate and show the possibilities that the 747 offered. One elaborate adaptation is Boeing's 747 Special Performance. The 747 SP, identified quickly by its shortened body, is designed solely for maximum range. It was 48 feet shorter than the standard 747. Boeing added a much taller vertical stabilizer to compensate for the reduced directional control that came with a much shorter fuselage. When it launched in 1975, it broke records. However, ultimately only 45 were built and the plane could would never forge a market for itself. The variant that stuck the landing the most was the 747-400, first flying in 1988. It is the most popular version of the 747 family. It included new technology that Boeing had developed for its 767 and 757 and added computerized flight decks. This took away the dials and gauges from the first iteration. In turn, this also eliminated the flight engineer's position. Purposefully built to carry cargo from the moment of inception, the 747 has also been called upon to carry some unusual cargo, most notably NASA's Space Shuttle. Today, the Dreamlifter, a heavily modified 747 with a bulbous fuselage, is used to carry essential components of the 787 Dreamliner, from factories around the world to Boeing's final assembly for facilities. Some models of the 747 are also capable of carrying a fifth engine under the wing. Qantas most recently used this ability in 2016 to rescue a stricken 747 in South Africa. More recently, Virgin Orbit are using the fifth pod mount for its Launcher 1 rocket. NASA also acquired a 747 SP airframe for SOFIA, the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, a joint project between NASA and the German Aerospace Center. The aircraft was converted to a giant flying infrared telescope with a 2-meter telescope and large sliding door in the aft fuselage. 
Sofia was retired at the end of 2022 as the funding for the project had expired. The 747 has also flown in many other specialized configurations, including air-to-air -air refueling, aerial firefighting, and command and control aircraft. The E-4B Nightwatch is a highly modified Boeing 747-200 with the purpose of being a strategic command post, but it's more commonly referred to as the Doomsday Plane. Modifications included state-of-the-art direct fire countermeasures, EMP hardened communication systems, and a decent selection of in-flight movies. It can house important governmental figures in weather-related emergencies and help coordinate response teams, as well as act as a backup aircraft for US presidents. The most iconic 747 of all is actually a pair of 747s. The two BC-25As delivered to the US Air Force in the early 1990s, commonly referred to as Air Force One. While the classic blue, white, and silver aircraft are the most recognizable VIP 747s, the 747 has been adopted by governments and the ultra-rich around the world. The last iteration of the 747 program is the 747-8, debuting in the 2000s. The aircraft was the last hurrah of the Queen of the Skies. Upon seeing the completed aircraft, Joe Sutter, the father of the series, said it looked right to him, finally. Despite being responsible for the first 747 back in the 1960s, it wasn't until Boeing extended the fuselage and fitted the aircraft with new wings and larger engines that Joe gave his approval in the finest way possible. The 747 owes its longevity to a role as a freighter. Thanks to Joe Sutter and the team at Boeing's goal to design an aircraft capable of transporting freight. Now, even as passenger airlines have removed the Queen in favor of more efficient twin engine jets, freighters have continued to be the backbone of the fleet. In 2022, Boeing completed a total of 206,727 flights. Of those, 188,663, or 91%, were operated by cargo aircraft. While many airlines continue to operate the 747 as a cargo aircraft, options to fly on one as a passenger are dwindling. But the passenger 747 will still be around for years to come, with at least Lufthansa committing to its fleet for the long haul. In 2022, Lufthansa operated 76% of all passenger 747 flights. With the delivery of the final Boeing 747, the manufacturer says goodbye to a program that has been slowly on the way out for some time. However, historian Michael Lombardi says that Boeing was also responsible for making the 747 obsolete through the natural progression of other programs. For example, twin-engined aircraft like the 767 benefited thanks to the development of ETOPS that no longer required quad-engined aircraft to complete missions over water. Airlines alongside the general public drive to be more sustainable and cut further emissions have put the 747 out of favor globally for most operations. While the advancements of the Boeing 767 undoubtedly played a part in the direction that trends were heading, the birth of the Boeing 777 was the nail in the coffin for the beloved series. The way people flew changed. Big planes were built for a hub-and-spoke model operating between major cities. Following that, they bought a smaller aircraft and head to another airport. Now, next-generation aircraft make it possible to get from your origin to your desired destination without stops. These next-generation twin-engined aircraft have opened new city pairings as well for customers. For Boeing, while they move ahead with the 777X, what Michael Lombardi says is the best replacement for the 747, it does soften the blow to end production on the Queen at the company. The team knows that in some capacity, the 777 program will carry on the goal of the 747, even with two fewer engines and without the iconic hump. To commemorate the final 747, Atlas Air and Boeing applied a decal towards the front of the final 747. N863GT, remembering the man and legend Joe Sutter. A replica of RA001 and an illustration of Joe Sutter are complemented with the text, Joe Sutter, forever incredible.